South Carolina team as opposed to maybe years past when you feel that face off against them? Uh, I mean, you know, every it's been since 2019, so it's definitely different. Uh, talking two years, you know, we've got some some of the same guys, but they're but they're all older. The guys that were in that 19 game are they're just older and more mature players. Um, and uh, but you know, the biggest thing is 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 you know they're playing with a lot of confidence, playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, we've seen some really good teams, uh, you know, over the years. So seen some good teams, seen some teams that. That, that were in transition, um, but this is a good team. It's a good team. You won uh, six in a row in the series. Before that, you lost five in a row. So what was the difference? What do you see as the difference between a kind of a long losing streak versus a, a long winning streak? Turnovers. I mean, that five-game that five game losing streak, we turned it over 15 times to their three. Five games, we turned it over 15 times. They turned it over three. And I think the last one in 2013, I think we had six turnovers in that game. So, um, you know, in a game like this, that, that, that'll, that'll beat you. As a receivers coach who has always preached the importance of playing away from the ball, how much joy did it give you to see Dakari uh, with those blocks? Uh, away from the call in the end zone. It was awesome. Made a big deal out about, out about that in front of the team on, on Monday, yesterday. Uh, you know, I just love the physicality, love the mind t mindset, and, uh, you know, being a complete player, playing without the ball, you know, making a difference. And just I thought we did a really good job, Bo as well. Uh, all those guys did a good job. You know, just you know, big runs come through great effort on the, on the second level. You know, by receivers. You know, whether it's running a guy off, staying in position, giving. You know, because backs can they don't need much. You know, if you can just cover people up, and, and a lot of that is is effort, um, and then just playing playing with some toughness, uh, especially when you're playing people who press you, uh, because they don't know the play. You know, so you know, change up your your technique, um, and you know, sometimes you're working a release technique, sometimes you're physical with them. And uh, just creates it's kind of that game within the game. But I'm really proud of Dakar. He's he's he and Bo as you know, true freshman. Same thing. The game has slowed down for him from where they were at the beginning of the year. Dakar hit a wall, and then we kind of got him through it. And and now he's playing with a ton of confidence. And so is Bo. And uh, you know, two really good players and uh, seven scholarship receivers out last week. We need them to be good players, uh, and they've come through for us. From the outside, it seems like maybe the Louisville game, the blocking as a whole from on the outside started to get better. At that point, is that accurate? And is I mean, it's it's been you know I thought I thought Jay Ross kind of was setting the tone for us. I mean, he really had he had he had three or four games in a row where he was man he was playing really physical without the ball, was making a lot of good blocks, and I think he was really trying to you know uh, lead the way in that regard, and it certainly was an emphasis for us. Um, and the guys that bought in, but you know, you know we don't right now. We're, we don't have a lot of guys. And the, the guys that are out there playing hard. You talked a lot in the past about thirteen personnel, and that's how you want to play. A lot of two tight end sets this weekend with the emergence of tight ends and the receiver injuries. Does that involve new install, or are you tweaking <coughs> packages that you already had to incorporate the second tight end? Uh, well, we, we've always you know had a, a twelve personnel package when we had the people. You know, when we've had the right personnel, we've always uh, had some 12 personnel stuff. We're we're primarily an 11 personnel team. That's 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 not going to change. But but we've had some years where we've been, you know, maybe it's been 75, 25, or 80, 20, or 90, 10, whatever. Uh, you know, we've never we'll get in some 13 stuff when we're in some short yardage and goal line things. But um, you know, we just we just feel good about you know the, the guys, the development there. And uh, but it's not as much. I mean, there's, it's install every week. You know, you, you take what you do and you have game plan install every single week. That's why camp is so important. Spring and camp and, and really building a foundation and an understanding of of your of your offense of your system. And then you know, week in and week out, you 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 tweak that, but it's still within the system. Uh, so it's it's install and it's game plan specific. Um, and but as guys learn the system. It makes sense to them, and it's not like it's something new. It's just just a different personnel that you have in the game. Uh, so we, we, we always have 
uh, some package stuff that that's uh, relevant to whatever game we're in. But you know, with the improvement of Ennis uh, and his physicality, and with the improvement of Brenny, although he had a couple mistakes last week, um, you know, it's a it's a, and then where we are you know, personnel wise, we're just trying to you know do what we do, but make sure that we've got we've got um, uh, you know answers, you know, because we're we're running out of people. So that's really it. It's a lot of, um, do you have an update on, on where he is? Still limping. Um, you know, he's, he's, they're calling it a bone bruise. Uh, so uh, he's, he's just limping around. Was he in line to play? Oh, yeah, yeah, he would have played. Yeah, he would have played a good bit. Um, but... He had a good week practice, and you know, again, we've been trying, and we had two games left with him, so we we're trying to strategize on how we wanted to use those two games. But that all ended uh, in warmups. What happened? It's a dangerous place out there in warmups. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just stand back, hide the women and children. Uh, he just, he just kind of planted wrong, and kind of came down on his heel, and. Uh, Next thing I know, Danny Poole's telling me, hey, Stilato's out. We're going to put him. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, we hadn't even played a snap. Uh, I don't even know. It was the craziest thing. We had that happen one year with Sam Cooper in Athens. Uh, same thing, you know. In fact, I, I think he broke his leg, though. Uh, or maybe it was his Achilles. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, same thing. Uh, but he just said he came down funny. And so it's kind of a, a, a deep bone bruise on his heel. Can't really walk. Hard to play receiver when you can't walk. You mentioned the turnovers <clears throat> that hurt you in that five game losing streak. South Carolina this year has been very good at forcing teams into mistakes. What have you seen from them that makes them so good at forcing teams into mistakes? Yeah, well they're aggressive. You know, they're aggressive and I think the biggest thing is they've they've structurally kind of made some changes. You know, uh, Tennessee really just they had some miscommunication issues and, and guys not on the same page and, and turned the guys loose. And it kind of since that game, they've made some adjustments. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not afraid to uh, play man coverage. They feel good about those guys. And um, uh, they've gotten their hands on some balls. They've had some, some fumbles. They've had some picks. Uh, so I think, they got, I think they got, I think it's three pick sixes uh, on the year. So, you know, just good positioning. And opportunistic, uh, finishing on the ball. Uh, so, you know, you need that along the way. Tell me the quarterback situation's been a little fluid with different guys coming in and out. With the sample size that you do have of Jason Brown, what, what are you kind of seeing from him? Yeah, I'm impressed with him. Uh, I, I never heard of him. I didn't know who he was. Uh, I, I, I obviously knew about uh, Dodie and, and um, you know, the, the, the unbelievable story about the – Grad assistant coach going to quarterback was that's amazing, uh, amazing story. So um, I, I didn't know about the this kid, and he's done a nice job. He came in first time I saw him. I guess it was Texas A and M. Uh, he came in in that game, and he really, he really did some good stuff. I mean, all the way to the last play. You know, the game was over, but he's playing. I mean, he scrambles out, throws a touchdown pass to number twelve in the you know, left side of the end zone there. And I, and I mean, you just you just see some good things. I see what they like about him, you know, because I think Zeb's back, but they've kind of hung stuck with this guy, uh, and I think he's taking advantage of his opportunity. He's got good poise. He can he can throw the football, um, and he's got a good understanding of what they're doing. But he's he's settled them down. He's made some big plays. He's he's extended a few plays where he's, you know, found some guys. Uh, had a big touchdown against um, Florida. I think it was Florida. Uh, they, you know, he extended, got out, and uh, found number six wide open in the end zone. Um, but he's he's doing a good job for him, doing a really good job. How would you describe that offense in, in terms of the influences that you see as far as the bunch formations and the route combinations and things like that? Before? Yeah, I mean, they're doing a good job with with the with the personnel they have. I mean, I think that's what everybody tries to do week in and week out, you know, because. You, you kind of figure out who you are, and certainly for you know, coming in, you're a new staff, and you're you're figuring those things out. And I think that they've they've done a nice job um, of of playing to their strengths. And uh, you know, the big old offensive line 
And, uh, you know, but they're running the ball with some power and trying to play action, trying to take some max pro shots. They move six around all over the place. Uh, they'll get on the perimeter with the screens and the screening goes. They'll run the, the reverses. They've had some, you know, they've had all the tricks. Uh, they've thrown a, uh, they open up with a um, flea flicker against Florida. They've, they've tr tried double passes. I mean, they've, they've, they've been creative, uh, but it still comes down to, you know, how are they going to run the football? And, you know, whether it's, you know, using the formationing to give them some, some uh, advantages or whatever, I think they've done a nice job, you know, uh, schematically giving them an opportunity. But then, the, and then, the, you know, number 11, his emergence, I think has been really, and then 20 getting back, because, you know, he was out for a while. Now him getting back going, uh, they've settled in. The physicality of their tight ends, uh, you know, these guys will, these guys will knock you around. And that's, that's been a, you know, I just think they, you know, there are a lot of 12 personnel with zero and, and Muse, nine. Um, and that's just kind of, again, using, using their people that they have to give them the best opportunity to move the ball. And then it, with, with all the transition at quarterback, it's been a challenge for them. Uh, but that's what you, you see with where they are now, playing with confidence. And, and 15 has really kind of settled them down because he's, he's made some nice throws for him. Debo, I know you said you really challenged the staff last week to, to coach his best game. Just what was your message um, to the staff just last week heading into Wake Forest? I, mean, just, I just felt like, you know, I mean, that's my challenge every week. I challenge them every single week. But uh, I just felt like that, uh, you know, we were going to have to do our best job. You know, just like we, we challenge our players every week to, to do their best, we were going to have to do our very best job in that game, um, you know, because that was a really good football team and, uh, you know, really challenged you schematically. And, um, but our staff did an awesome job. And, you know, I just felt like that, uh, you know, we set the tone every week and just kind of reemphasizing that. What's your relationship with Coach Beamer like? Oh, it's great. I've known Shane a long time. Uh, I always had great respect for him. I mean, you know, that's not ever going to change. That's, you know, unfortunate part of this business is, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people that, that hate me and they've never met me. They don't know me from Adam because I wear a paw on my shirt, um, you know, and that's, I mean, I'm, that just comes with it. Um, you know, you, when I first got here, you, you go on the road recruiting, nobody knows me, uh, my, you know, first time out. And, and, but I'm used to it because that's the way it was in Alabama Auburn too. You know, you walk into a school and, some people are really happy to see you because you're the guy from Clemson. And then other people are like, oh, you're the guy from Clemson. Yeah, uh, you know, and you get that. And they don't know you. Uh, so that comes with the territory from a fan standpoint. But, um, you know, from a professional standpoint, you know, just because uh, somebody wears a logo, that doesn't mean I can't like them anymore. I mean, I, I've always liked Shane. Shane is he's a, he's a, he's a great uh, coach. He's a great man. Love his family. Love his dad. I've always had a great relationship with, with, his, with his mom and dad. And uh, so I got a lot of respect for him, you know. And, I mean, I compete against a lot of friends, um, you know. And every, every game's a rivalry because uh, they're trying to beat you and you're trying to beat them. Uh, every single week you're playing somebody. And a lot of those people that we play are, you know, are friends. Uh, so... Uh, that 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 doesn't change just because you know he's the head coach of South Carolina now. I I I've got a lot of respect for him. How often did y'all communicate over the years before he got? To yeah, that? just obviously when he was at South Carolina as an assistant, uh, we were both assistants, so see him a lot. And then he was with Woody at Mississippi State, um, and I got to know him you know way back then. And then just over the years, and then he was at Georgia, um, communicate, text, and. And then he was at uh, Oklahoma, and we'd stay in touch. And his son actually became a Clemson fan. Uh, I'm sure he would still tell you that. You know, his son was pulled, you know, he was a huge Clemson fan. I can't wait to see him. I'm going to remind him of that uh, when I see him. He better be out on the field and be looking for him. But, uh, you know, I mean, I remember one year he was in Oklahoma, and, uh, you know, he, but he wanted a, he wanted like a Clemson jersey and this and that. So, uh, I sent him some stuff, and, and Shane sent me a video of him. And just a, he's got a beautiful family, uh, but but his little boy, and, that, and we had a nice laugh on that. 
you know, when uh, when he was taking the job. I talked to him a couple times before he got the job, and um, I said, you know, you're going to have a problem on your hands. It's going to be a real problem when your son comes to Clemson. Uh, it's going to be an issue for you uh, in this state. So, you know, thankfully you got a few years to figure that out. But, yeah, so we, we've always communicated and stayed in touch and, and um, uh, you know, collaborated at time uh, over the years a few times. Can you relate to what he's doing now at the start of his career in South Carolina? It sounds like he wants to make that his only stop, like you want to make Clemson your only stop. And he's building up on positive traits of the school and the university continually like you did when you got started at Clemson. Do you, do you see a lot of similarities in, in style and the way you, he's handling his stuff, the way you handle your stuff? Yeah, right? well, I mean, I'm not close enough to it on a daily basis to – to really answer that, I can all I can say is, you know, from a big picture standpoint, is I think he's he's doing a great job with his team, you know, and trying to build team, uh, trying to establish, uh, you know, core values, and uh, you know, it's not easy to do that. And he's and he's you know got a clear philosophy, I think, of how he wants it to look like and a vision for what he wants it to look like, and and just kind of stay in the course to that, uh, and that's not easy. There, there's there's tough decisions along the way. There's setbacks, you know, all those type of things. But I think the biggest thing with Shane is he's he's a he's a positive guy, and I think that he, uh, you know, he just keeps looking at it as half full, and I think that's what it takes. Anything for Coach from Zoom? You have a favorite Thanksgiving meal to eat on Thursday? Yeah, turkey. Uh, and and my mom's dressing and some mac and cheese and you know all the usuals. Uh, so I look, look forward to that for sure. How did uh, Justin's Justin Ross the surgery go? Great, it went really good. You know, it was a very clean, very simple, very simple uh, surgery to put the screw in there. But he'll he'll be he'll be um, you know in a, in a, here in a few weeks. You think he could still possibly play the bowl game? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how quick he recovers. But uh, what bowl game we're in, you know, what's the timeline and all that stuff. But I'd say uh, it's a possibility. you have any idea what Galloway's plans are? Uh, graduating. And, uh, you know, I think he's, he's – we haven't sat down and talked about it, but his intention was to graduate and, and, and move on. Uh, he's not indicated anything – it's changed there. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thanks, Coach. All right. Appreciate it.